So loads of people ask me about the screen recording tool that I use. So I thought it would be a good idea to do a review of this amazing tool because without Screen Studio, which I think in my opinion is hands down the best screen recording tool there is, the best screen recording software there is, and I've tried many, Without Screen Studio, I wouldn't be able to create as many videos as I do as quickly as I do because the static screen recording kind of software, it still needs quite a bit of editing. But with Screen Studio, everything you see, all the scrolls, just like you can see in this example video, and if you've watched any of my videos, when I click, it zooms in and that just adds a whole new depth to the videos that I create. So it allows me to just go on with my recording, talk away, click away, and know that this is being edited for me. So at the moment, I still pay for CapCut for more advanced video editing, but Screen Studio has been the best that I've found for Loom style screen recording, whether I'm doing something on my desktop, within apps, or on the web. Everything I do is having this amazing animation going on. As soon as I found out about this tool, I bought it. I paid for the annual pricing. It's $29 a month if you don't pay annually. So they've definitely priced it to collect annual subscriptions, but $9 a month, a lot cheaper than many of the other tools I've used and still currently use. I still use CapCut, which I think is around $12 a month. I can't remember. Uh, same kind of annual pricing though. But with CapCut, you do get the screen recording. But if you've used the web version, then you would have noticed it crashes and then the 20 minute recording you've done is kaput, it's, it's gone. So I absolutely love Screen Studio. It's been super reliable. And when I did have an issue, I reached out to the team. They got on it with a solution immediately. Um, again, this is the pricing. You've got uh, all Screen Studio features, lifetime updates, shareable links. This is something they've added recently. I'm gonna go over to the tool itself now. Okay, I've got two Screen Studios installed, so <laughs> I don't know why, but that's good because now you can see what I see when I click record. So in the top bar, you've got the logo at the top. You can't see it right now because I'm um, recording a specific area, but uh, this bar comes up and then you select the, your camera and your microphone. I think this is gonna mess with what I'm doing, so I'm gonna try and take this off. Do not record the camera and uh, yeah, do not record them or record that microphone. Um, I'm not gonna hit record because again, that's just gonna mess with things. But you have options to record from your device. So you connect your phone and then you can screen record and everything you do benefits from the same kind of tap zoom that you've got going on with hair. You've got record area, which is what I use. So I don't have all my a million tabs in the video or you can record the window, again, just the browser or your entire display. And then you've got the option to record the system audio. So the sounds on the screen, the clicks and whatnot. And then you've got some more advanced options here. So the countdown by default, it starts with three second countdown. If you need a bit more time to get yourself ready, you can set it to five or 10. Um, record engine, I'm not entirely sure. It's, uh, I use the default, which is modern. And then you can add speaker notes, which is a teleprompter. So everything that you put in this window, it's not gonna display when you're recording and you can press play. And obviously if I had text here, it would be scrolling. And then of course you've got the settings for the speed and whatnot. So I didn't know this initially when I got the software, I didn't know it had the teleprompter installed, but you can put it right here up close to the camera. And when you're reading, it looks like you're looking at least in the region of the camera, which is cool. And then you've got the notepad opacity if you want to see behind you and then the font size. So to start recording, you choose how you want to do the recording so again, you've got the area, device, window, display. And once you hit that button, it will come up with all the different options. So if I hit display now, I can click start recording or I can select what I want it to do once the video is done. So I can create a project, which is what I typically do. So I can go through and edit it. You can export and copy to clipboard. You can export and create a shareable link, which is similar to Loom or Descript. So you get a URL that you can share on Twitter or anywhere else 
else in email and then you've got export and save to file so if you don't want it to waste time going to project you've done one take it was perfect it was flawless export it to file and then you can upload it to YouTube and what I have checked always is automatically create zoom so that is what happens when I'm clicking on things and it's zooming in for me sometimes it will be a bit off but once you go to edit which I'm going to go to in a moment you'll see that you can just move things around you can control the zoom you can change the click so I'm going to head over to the actual edit studio now and show you that so you'll have all of your projects in a screen studio projects folder. And once you open a project, this is what you'll see. So this is the editing screen. Now I definitely think it has a long way to go to rival things like CapCut or Final Cut Pro for editing videos. But I definitely believe that this has the potential to surpass all of those video editing tools because of how quick you can get things done. So the editing, again, it's very basic. You hit the scissors to clip. Uh, I think they do have shortcuts. I've not managed to set those up yet. Yeah, right here, you've got shortcuts. Um, I don't use them at the moment. Um, and I should because I've been complaining about not being able to use shortcuts, but there we go. So you can clip your videos down and then you can, if you've got a shortcut, you don't have to press that, but then you can reduce the size, uh, delete clips and edit the speed. And then the main thing, which is what everybody loves is this uh, background setting. So you can set your own background or you can change it to one of the backgrounds they have. I tend to use the default one, it gives off the Mac feel, and then you can adjust the padding. So I'm zoomed in, so it's not showing, but let's go over here. You can adjust the padding, so the more you up it, the more screen you see, and then I tend to have it around here, just because I like the, the outside look that it gives. And then rounded corners, you can, I don't know why you'd want to have it all the way down like this, but I like the slightly rounded corners. I just like the look it gives it. And as I said here, you've, these are auto zooms. You can see it's got 2x auto, but you can edit this. You can manually decide where you want the zoom to be. So let me just, I just came off of it. You can decide where on the screen you want it to zoom in on. So if it automatically zooms in a strange place and you've clicked, but you want to show what happens, um, on a specific area, then you can just move this around. Um, I tend to leave it on auto unless there is something very specific that I want to show on the screen. And then you've got different levels of zoom, so 2x or 3x or however many x you want to adjust, that's there. And then you've got the cursor style. They've recently added a bunch of new cursors. It would actually be cool if you could upload your own cursor but they do have some fun ones here. I definitely like to see more um, cursors being added. And then you can hide the cursor if it's not moving. So when you're playing the video, it hovers around. And if you stop, I don't think in this video I've stopped at all because I'm showing things, but if you stop for a certain amount of seconds, it will hide the cursor and you can, you can set how how long so you've got two seconds one second um or you can just hide the cursor altogether so many many options and i believe they they still have quite a few more things to come i've not even covered everything um one of the things i like as well is the click effect you've got circle or ripple again i think they're going to work on adding even more um, of these smaller effects but let me try and demonstrate that let's see if it clicks it should ripple yeah, it, well that was a, I think, circle when you click. Yeah, uh, and then ripple kind of ripples the area around it. If I'm typing, did it do it? I can't, I couldn't see that. Yeah, there you go, so it's just a slight effect. And then over here you've got rotate, so you can have the cursor rotated a bit, you can go crazy with it, put it upside down. Um, and then you've got rotate cursor while moving. So if I reset it and when it moves, it's kind of like it, it drags and it kind of like italics itself, um, which is just the fun effect. And uh, yeah, these things are just there to make the video more fun. They're not, you know, nothing major. And the size of the cursor, 
it's gone because I'm typing. Yeah, so huge cursor. And another thing is this thing down here, typing. So it detects when you're typing and you have the option to speed up any areas where you're typing, which you may have seen in one of my videos. I'll be typing and I'm talking out loud. So when I'm typing a prompt on chat GPT or something like that, it will speed up because I have told it to speed up. You don't have to have this. You can apply it to all areas of typing or you can apply that single suggestion or you can leave it alone completely. So those are, I think I've covered all of the main things. In this video, there's no face, so I can't show the uh, face options. Let me close this. You can have it square, horizontal, vertical, or the full video, and you can choose the position of it. So at the moment, you can't actually drag where you want it to show. I think that would be a nice addition if while you're recording, because sometimes you're recording and the thing you want to show is in the bottom corner, you should just be able to drag your video where out of the way and then put it back um, but you do have dynamic camera layout so you can clip an area and so if i clip this area here i can set a dynamic camera layout just for that clip so really cool options again some of these features have been added in the last two weeks or so so very active project and um, so many more things to come captions you can use ai to generate the transcript very useful for if you want to create timestamps for your video you could just take that transcript and give it to chat gpt or maybe they will build that into the tool at some point and um, but then you can also take the transcript and turn it into social media posts, posts for LinkedIn, all of those kind of things. Or you've got the language selection, automatically it will try to pick up your language. This bunny rabbit down here, which is the control for animations. So you've got motion blur. So while the page is going to the next page and it zooms in and out, you can adjust that. Project detail. Whoa, loud. And then you've got cursor movement, screen zooming, all of those things you can adjust if you are so inclined. Uh, so I'm gonna head over to the roadmap now to see what we've got to look forward to. In progress now, they are working on authentication-based licensing instead of li license key, okay? Implementing authentication-based licensing to replace traditional license keys, improving the user experience and enhancing security. I'm not sure what authentication-based licensing is. Uh, so yeah, I don't think that's not really a functional thing that we can, you know, celebrate, but it's a thing. Team subscription architecture. In team ownership, in team, ownership of the team is the one connecting credit card and starting subscription. Owners can invite team members who will need to sign in, will, who, who will need to sign in and will automatically be able to activate their studio installs and then masking sensitive data. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. I've tried to install blur plugins and stuff like that because that is a concern I have. When I'm sharing my screen all the time, I have to be on the ball to make sure I'm not sharing my IP address or anything like that. And that's difficult. Um, so that's going to be a huge plus. Im implement a feature that enables users to easily conceal sensitive information with their recordings, ensuring the privacy and security of any confidential data displayed during the video. Awesome. Now that's what they're working on at the moment. And then they've got things that they have planned and you've got uh, voice audio enhancement so okay more like studio sound so the thing they've got at the moment is just supposed to normalize and clean the audio but not in the way that studio sound would so that looks like they're still going to be working on that making it better which is awesome and then you've got multi-clip recordings ability to merge multiple recordings into one project that would be good because at the moment you can't pause uh, recording you just have to record the whole thing which would be something they, they should add to be fair but that's gonna be awesome if you're recording something on your phone screen or just something in another area and then you want to put them all together making it more of a robust video editing tool and not just a screen recording tool and then you've got add click descriptions I think that's like a tool tip let's see introduce a feature that enables users to incorporate visual or textual descriptions of clicks with it within their recordings that's awesome that's that reminds me of super demo i've used super demo before which is like a web version of this feature that they described 
where when you click, you can you can create a, a video demo, but it's more interactive and you can click and then, as they've said, describe what's happening. So textual descriptions of every click, which makes it awesome if you've created a SaaS and you don't want typical tool tips, you wanna run them through the project. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's cool. Um, <laughs> so full text slides, develop a feature that enables users to add full text slides to their recordings, offering a new way to share information and improve the overall clarity of their videos. Cool. Um, enter exit animations, that's a good one background music and a library of songs to use that's that's cool um, we do have AI um, we do have AI uh, song generation so that's what I use if I use music at all um, but that would be cool if it's if it incorporates that in some way and create videos from screenshots I'm not how, not sure how that will work and ability to pause the recording yes move that all the way up to the top please um, and then the things that they've done so Again, my opinion, this is hands down the best screen recording software we've got. I think it's very well priced. I think it's a great tool and we've got so much more to look forward to. If you want to check this out, I've got my link in the description, which is an affiliate link. Of course, it costs you no extra to use my link, but it helps me and helps the channel. So yeah, link in the description and let me know your thoughts. Drop a comment, like, subscribe for more.